Hey, good morning everybody. My name is Ben. Today is uh, February 4th and uh, I got another article for everyone. And uh, this article is about something that kind of strikes home for me. See, I, uh, I used to work at Dollar General, so some of what happens in this article actually kind of touches upon what happened to me while I was working for Dollar General. And uh, let's just find my mouse. Hold on. So, Family Dollar uh, denies workers meal breaks and is cited $1.5 million in penalties. Now, that sounds like a lot of money, right? But when you really think about it, or think about it, Family Dollar and companies like it, they make more money doing this thing than what it costs them to be fined for it. So that $1.5 million, when you really think about it, in the grand scheme of things, is actually a pittance compared to how much money they actually make from creating the, cr the conditions where they, don't, they deny their associates, the, the people who work for them, meal breaks. Now, when I talk about Dollar General, what happened to me is I was a key holder. So I was the only person on, um, on duty that could do overrides. So I would have to take lunch. And that means, you know, it's, it's 30 minutes off the clock and I can't really perform work duties. But the problem is, is I can't leave the store. And I, uh, if while I'm on my lunch, and something happens and I have to do an override. I, the, the majority of the time the override takes about 30 seconds to really do and it's just a quick in and out kind of thing. Essentially all I'm doing is I'm turning a key and changing things. And you know, it's 30 seconds here or there, a minute, 30, you know, it's, it doesn't seem like a big deal but at the same time, I'm supposed to be off the clock. I'm not supposed to be working. And uh, there's been a couple of times where something would take longer than a minute and what they tell you to do is just go ahead, clock in, clock out. And um, yeah, so I didn't always uh, <clears throat> have a 30 minutes without performing any work. So um, let's go ahead and read the article anyway. All right, so Dollar Tree Stores Inc., uh, which has many stores in the Woochester and surrounding area has been cited $1.5 million in penalties for more than 3,900 violations of the state's meal break laws. Attorney General Maura Healy announced uh, Family Dollar was issued two citations by the Attorney General's office for failing to provide employees who worked for more than six hours and one day at least 30 minutes up for a meal break, as well as requiring employees to stay on site if given a break. See, that's what happened to me when I worked at Dollar General. Like, um, I, I was always working the night shift, so by the time I took my lunch, I was the only key holder in the store, so I couldn't leave. And I, um, I'd be the guy that if something happened, I had to, I had to do it. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. And like, company policy was that you had to clock in and clock out, but. I mean, when, when you really think about it, that's kind of an annoying process and kind of messes up your whole lunch. But, yeah, it didn't always work that way. Uh, let's see. The violations affected 620 employees across 100 locations throughout Massachusetts, the majority of which are in low-income low neighborhoods. Gee, I wonder why. Uh, let's see. These citations should send a message to all companies that they need to do right by their employees and provide meal breaks that are consistent with the law. You think that, but if it makes them money, do you think they're really going to change how they do things? No, you, you, you should really be giving them larger fines, but that's just my uninformed opinion. Uh, let's see, Rochester County has 18 family dollar stores. Uh, with six in Rochester alone and 12 across 10 central Massachusetts towns. Is that Wolcrester? Wolcrester. Okay, whatever. I can't read. 
Uh, let's see, Family Dollar, a Virginia-based company, employs more than 900 people at its Massachusetts stores and operates more than 15,000 stores across the country. Employees told the Attorney General's office uh, persisting staffing shortages are to blame for the lack of breaks, forcing workers to skip breaks or serve under, um, to serve the understaffed Family Dollar stores. See, a lot of the business model for stores like Family Dollar and Dollar General is to just not have people. So um, a typical night for me when I was working at Dollar General was it was just me and a cashier. And uh, the reason they would do this is because it was cheaper. Like, yeah, that, that, that's, that's kind of how these stores operate. They operate on the minimum level of, uh, of staffing. And not only that, but like they expect you as one person to do the work of workload of about three different people. And uh, you know what? I'm kind of glad I don't work for Dollar General anymore. Uh, let's see. Uh, workers give us their time, energy, and effort to keep the business running and our economy afloat, Haley said in a release. These citations should send a message to all companies that they should do right by their employees and provide meal breaks consistent with the law. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The investigation in the Family Dollar began after the Attorney General's Fair Labor Division received multiple complaints that employees were not given proper meal breaks because of staffing shortages. Investigators found from 2018 to 2019 the company routinely cut the necessary payrolls, leaving stores understaffed and resulting in hundreds of employees being unable to leave their store or take meal, meal breaks, according to the Attorney General's office. According to the investigation, Family Dollar employees were required to re, uh, remain on store premises even after punching up for meal breaks, violating workers' rights. So, uh... You know what? Let's let's look something up real quick. It's Massachusetts. A right to work state. And is in front of that. Let's take a look at what it says. Employment terminations. A compilation of laws and cases. Uh, let's see. An employee discharged from such employment shall be paid in full the day of this discharge. Uh, Okay, yeah, it looks like uh, Massachusetts is a right-to-work state. So um, when you really think about it, these right-to-work states, particularly like Florida where I live too, um, it kind of puts employees in a really shitty position. So, you know, the argument that I keep hearing from a lot of people is, well, why don't you just get a better job? The thing is, is the, the jobs that are available in your area, like if you're already working at a family dollar, sure, you can go to Dollar General or any other similar chain, but you're still going to be treated like shit and you're still going to be paid the bare minimum. And, um, you know, I, I made the recent observation, like uh, I, I went to like, um, I went to a mall recently and I was walking around and, you know, the, a lot of the people that work in the stores in the mall they they don't make a lot of money either but like when you look at the sheer amount of product and um other things that they have on the shelf it's like you know as expensive as everything is there they like you keep hearing these claims that you know that that there's no money to give workers paid time off because of covid or you know that uh things like uh, providing people with like a living wage is it's an untenable situation meanwhile during covid with everything that's going on companies have or these corporations have been enjoying massive profits and um, insane levels of compensation for the executives meanwhile the people who actually make those profits and uh, revenues possible they're the ones that get shit on 
and have to um, deal with people telling them either COVID's not real or threatening their lives when they say, hey, could you please wear a mask? Like, I think I saw uh, an article recently about, uh, let's see, guy pulls gun on employee for asking to wear a mask. Uh, let's see. Yep, right here. And this was a day ago. So, uh, confrontation over mask policy. Customer pulls gun on Bellevue gas station employee. Let's see, they got a video here. Let's see if it's not screwed up. Caught on camera, so. scuffle inside a Bellevue gas station spills outside and ends uh, the wow. pulling a gun on an employee. And the confrontation started when wow. the woman told Look them at this shit. to put on a mask. The woman now faces a felony harassment charge. Como Suzanne Fawn reports. Who the hell does this? At Why? the station on Northeast 20th Street near Bellevue Highland Park, customers uh, are shocked at how quickly a conflict over mask policy escalated. This terrible situation Why? that it got to that point, I can't, I can't believe it. It's just an absurd time we live in. It. I think it's a little ridiculous to pull out a gun or like a knife on someone for some. Yeah, like they're, they're just doing their job. The 33-year-old woman, Angela Nomanson of Spanaway, Pierce County, finished pumping gas into her company car and then went inside for a receipt. When she went in, she didn't have a mask on. Police say Nomanson refused when the gas station employee repeatedly asked her to put one on. The worker also asked Nomanson several times to leave, and she wouldn't do it. Wow. They did physically remove her. Uh, from what we can tell through the video and through the interviews and all the investigation that was conducted there, it was not an inappropriate amount of force that he used. He escorted her out of the business, and at that point, uh, uh, well, I mean, see where I can see part of this being. Typically, as an associate, you're you should never touch. If you're working, don't ever touch somebody. Don't try to physically remove them. Like you should really never do that but at the same time like being having a gun pulled on you for this it's just i don't know it's ridiculous um they kind of i don't know personally in that situation i would have asked them to wear a mask and if they refused i would have just not argued with them uh let's see so newly rele released uh surveillance Video shows a confrontation between a gas station employee and Bellevue and a female customer who pulled a gun on the worker after refusing to wear a mask. Uh, they now face a felony harassment charge. Uh, let's see. The indictment happened January 27th at the AM PM convenience store, uh, Acro Gas Station in Bellevue, at uh, the northeast corner uh, or northeast of 20th Street and 140th Avenue Northeast. Police said Angela Nomanson, 33, finished fueling, um, fueling up her company car and she went inside to the convenience store to get a receipt. The employee asked her several times to leave because she didn't have a mask on. Police say Nomanson refused and got into a verbal argument. According to police, the gas station employee escorted the customer outside and went back inside and then uh, that's when Nomanson flashed a gun at the worker. She pulled a handgun from a holster. I think it was on her waist and held it up. Said Captain Daryl McKinney. She said something to him and turned around and walked back to her car. The store clerk told police that he thought Nomanson was going to shoot him and kill him. According to court documents, the woman called 911 and told police she felt threatened by the employee. According to the Bellevue police, uh, the clerk did nothing wrong. He did physically remove her from uh, what we can tell from the video, all the interviews and investigations that was that were conducted. Um, it was not an appropriate amount of force that he used. Still, the fact that a, a, an employee used force to remove somebody from a store is kind of iffy on my... Uh, to me, but I mean, maybe things are different in Washington. It's just a terrible situation that got to that point, said Alex Du of Bellevue. I feel really bad for the clerk that it happened. Um, I just can't believe um, for it to come off the table like that and escalate to a level over a mask. Uh, du works at a business right next door to the convenience store. Everyone is super nice, uh, Du said. I think it's ridiculous to pull out a gun or a knife on someone for something as simple as that. So, 
yeah, it's pretty much going over that stuff there. Um, I'll leave a link to this article in the uh, description. But anyway, this is a, a nice quick video. I, I haven't really uploaded anything in a week. So um, anyway, if you like this content, go ahead and like the video. If you want to subscribe, maybe I'll keep doing shit like this. I don't know. I'm just kind of making it up as I go. Um, thank you for watching, and have a good day, everybody.